an unpopular opinion. Learn what you're going to do before you do it. Do research, 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 research. There's not enough research that you can even do because once you get something new, you're still going to have to do more research. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel, I'm Patrice. Thank you for being here. Please look at the other stuff. If you like the content on my channel, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. But today, we are going to be headed over to our DTF printer and, well, at least one of our DTF printers. Today, we're going to be looking at the Pro Colored Dual Head DTF printer. And y'all, I'm just going to start by saying this. I absolutely love this machine. This is by far my easiest DTF printer to maintain and print with. So I started out with the Epson 8550, the Ecotank 8550, which is not made for DTF at all. And I think I need to do a whole separate video just to cover that again. But I started out with the 8550, the Epson 8550, I converted it into DTF and it worked beautifully for me, but it is definitely not for the faint at heart. Okay, it is not. And I also have the Pro Colored L1800 DTF printer, which works works fine too. But y'all, this Pro Colored dual head DTF printer, and I know you guys see a lot of printers that look very similar to these sorts of printers, and y'all, they're basically the same printers. The only difference sometimes may be the customer support that you may receive. A lot of the difference is the pricing as well, but these printers pretty much do the same thing and they're pretty much the exact printers. I just wanted to put that out there. But nonetheless, we are going to head over to our printer today and I'm gonna show you all how I usually do a little bit of maintenance on it. I don't have to do a ton of maintenance on it all the time, but I have not used my printer in maybe over a week. And so I know that not using it in over a week, I didn't even turn it on. I didn't run any printhead cleanings or anything like that. So I know that there's going to be some type of blockage, clogs. There, my biggest problem with it though usually is like there's a lot of air buildup. So we're going to head over to our printer. We're going to remove some of that air, remove any clogging, and get those inks back flowing fairly quickly. And I'm going to show you how I usually do that. All right, so let's head over to our machine and... Let's get started. All right, guys. So I haven't used this in maybe about six days or maybe seven, maybe a full week. And I need to print some transfers. So I know that I need to start off with maintenance. So all I'm going to do now is bring the print head over. This particular area over here is pretty clear of the machine so I can actually get under my my print head a lot better okay and, and it's fully over so I'm gonna take one of these q-tips it's long and I'm going to put some alcohol onto it and I'm just gonna wipe under both print heads remember this particular printer has two print heads and so I'm going to just clean from underneath both, just to kind of moisten it up, loosen up any dried ink that may be under there, and then we're going to extract some ink from the waste tank. So I am just going to clean. Okay, so the color side looks like it's going just fine, but the white, not too much. So I'm definitely going to begin by extracting some of the ink from the waste tank from both the white and the color, okay? So let's head over to the other side. These come in handy. I have tons of these because this really makes the starting process a lot quicker 
than if I were to be running print head cleanings, multiple print head cleanings. All right, so let's get ready to extract some ink from the waste tank. So before we begin, I want to bring our print head back over to its docking station. So I am just going to click the right arrow and now it's back where it needs to be, okay? So that is very important when doing this because if you forget that particular step, you'll, you won't be able to get the ink out, okay? The print head needs to be on its docking station in order to be able to extract the ink out, okay? And so I am just going to now grab a syringe. So this is the syringe that I will be using. And I am then going to, oh, another thing I forgot to tell you guys, make sure you have on gloves, okay? Make sure you have on gloves because you don't want this ink all over your hands. Now, I am just going to take out the white tube. There are three tubes here. One is pretty transparent and just stays in. And then you have two, you have your white and then you have your color tube, okay? And I am going to start with the white. I am just going to insert the syringe and I do have a tip on, onto the syringe and I'm going to pull. Now, what happens is, is that sometimes you'll pull air and there isn't that much coming out at that point. So what I will do is, I'll just go ahead, release it, and I'll keep doing it until I can actually pull that ink out, okay? So if you feel any resistance, just keep pulling. Pulling, and I like to do like a slow, a slow pull to kind of help to release any air that is in those tanks. All right, so we're just gonna keep doing this process until we get a nice steady flow of ink. And as you can see, there's ink coming through, but there's also heavy air pockets, okay? So I'm just going to keep pulling that ink through. This part, depending on how long you haven't used your, your printer, this part could take a few minutes to do. So don't get frustrated and feel like there's nothing coming out. You just gotta keep repeating the process. Now, if you have larger syringes, that would help also, but I usually keep the small ones on hand. All right, if you guys see that ink trying to come through. Okay, and we're just pulling that air out. All right, guys, so the white was giving me a lot of problems, so I was just trying to extract it out. So what I did was, since I had gotten some of the air out, I went ahead and ran a print head cleaning, and then I removed some more of that uh, ink. I was able to get it. You'll see it a little bit later, but now I'm going to move on to the color ink. All right, and then you want to do the same thing for the color. All right, so we're getting the... In the black, and now that black is flowing, and there is a little bit of resistance, so I'm just going to keep just helping it through. And this is important for all of your colors, so a little bit is coming out, but I definitely feel more resistance. I see a lot of bubbles. That one looks good, but you want to make sure you get, like, I usually do a little bit more than 5 ml. You want to make sure that enough comes out. Because that will let you know that your ink is flowing properly. And so I feel a little resistance. So if you see now that ink is flowing now. Even though it didn't come out when we did the... The print head cleaning, it still got everything back up and going. So I'm just pulling and there's resistance. So I'm just holding it like this, going against the resistance to help that ink start to flow through. And if you guys notice now, it's starting to come out a little bit more. I see all those bubbles that's in there. 
I also see my lines filling up where the print head is because now that ink is flowing through. It's, it's, it's a lot of bubbles in here, a lot. All right, so before I pull it out, I'm gonna take this off. I'm also going to replace this ink back into our ink tank. Now I do this for the white. Um, wanna know you can't do it for the color, so don't even attempt it. But the white, I can do it for the white. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit. So if you want to do that, it's important to have two different syringes when you're you're doing this. All right. So now I'm going to put it back and I'm going to bring, I'm going to do the same thing because I really want it to flow nicely. That's how I'll know that I won't get lines in my prints and I'll get good coverage. And if you guys see that second go around right now, we have more ink coming through. I have more resistance and you can do it until you don't have any resistance and it starts flowing more smoothly. But if you guys notice now that white ink is coming through and that's definitely what you want to see. That is definitely what you want to see. Right, and I still have a lot of resistance right now. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna put this back in and I'm gonna give it one more go. And then after this, it should be fine because if you see, we have quite a bit of white ink in there. But I'm just making sure that that ink is going to flow exactly the way that I want it to flow. This is what happens when you don't use your machine for a little bit of time, but it's not lost, okay? You can totally get it back going. And I'm just going against the resistance until it loosens up. First, there was no resistance, and, and but no ink was coming out. Now there's resistance, and ink is coming out. I prefer it this way. I like to kind of get comfortable. And then eventually, it'll loosen up. And that's what you want. You want it to be loosened up because now you know that those ink cartridges, that print head is printing out smoothly. That's looking good. All right, so we're all set. And we're going to do one more print head cleaning. And then we're going to get ready to print our design. All right, so once that's all done, you want to go ahead and do another cleaning. Your ink should be flowing properly. Also, make sure that you put those tubes back into the waste container. Okay, you don't want that. That ink before pressing print head cleaning, you want to make sure that those tubes are inserted into the waste tank. If not, you will have ink all over the place. All right, and so everything's looking good. My ink is nicely flowing through the tubes. I can see that now. I do see a little bit of a bubble, so I kind of like to just clear any bubbles from the tubes. Once it's done with the print head cleaning, you can pull it over to the center and just examine your, your tubes and make sure that you can maybe knock some of those air bubbles out. All right, that's done. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and do a test. I don't have my computer set up on the printer just yet, but if you click test, it will do 
a print head check for you. Let's see, mine is offline, but set it up and you should be good to go. If you see any lines in your print head check, then you may want to just do another cleaning. You don't really have to mess with the waste tank anymore. You may just want to do another cleaning just to make sure everything is flowing properly. All right, guys, so I'm going to get ready to print out the design that I need to, to print out today. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the paper back. Well, actually, I'm not going to bring the paper back because I did have some ink spillage from the from the print head. But I am going to take these two clamps and place them at the edge of the paper just to help bring it down better so that I don't get any smearing. This usually happens sometimes if the paper starts to lift up a little bit. So I do that, especially when I'm not using the, the shaker system. All right, so let's get ready and we're going to print. We're gonna see how this comes out. <laughs> Now we're printing and as you see everything looks great so it's important to do maintenance before you waste any ink and before you waste any of your film just to make sure everything flows correctly but I am happy with how this looks. We are actually going to also place some of the film through the shaker and the oven so you can see that process as well but this looks absolutely amazing. Alright so now I'm just going to bring this down. I'm going to use my rotary tool to cut it. There's an opening here for a slicer. I think with the newer models, they include a slicer with it. With my model, I got it quite a while ago, so it's not the newest one. So I'm just going to slice it. And then, of course, I'm going to powder it and after I powder it, I am going to cure it. This is what we have. All right, y'all, so I'm just gonna continue printing out the transfers that I need to make for a shirt order. We're not going to be pressing those today in this video, but I just need to go ahead and finish printing this out. While these are printing out, I do wanna make sure that we touch on the safeties of DTF printing. You wanna make sure you have your mask on. You wanna make sure that you have gloves, especially when dealing with the power powder. Make sure that you're doing it in a ventilated area, whether you're doing DTF or the sublimation DTF hack. That is very important. You don't want to cause yourself any health problems working with DTF. So please research, take note, and know the proper safety measures for using this print method. All right, it is super fun. It is very popular right now. However, you want to make sure you're safe. So we're just going to keep printing everything out. And I am just printing this out straight into the powder. I am going to be bringing this up through the oven because I want to I want it to catch onto the roller of the oven. Now, I'm doing it this way because I don't want to waste any film. I don't want to have to cut film off. And I just find this way to be a little more convenient for me. Now, you have to be careful when doing this as you see. I caused a problem with the part of the print on the word free because I lifted up the film and that film needs to remain flat on the printing board. Okay, it needs to remain flat. You actually don't want any of that uh, film to get caught underneath your print head. It could scratch up your print head. But this is pretty much how I began to kind of guide the film through the shaker and make sure that I get every inch of my film printed on. I'm going to grab a piece of masking tape and just tape that down until it begins to print and it touches the sensor. It's very important to make sure that everything is flowing correctly because you don't want any of your design to start smearing. Once it happens, you know that it's not threading through the machine or the shaker properly. And so I often use these wood clamps to just Give a little extra pressure to make sure that that film stays flat onto the printer. However, you have to be careful when using this too because 
I walked away and I let the, the wood clamp kind of touch the edge of the shaker and that caused a little bit of smearing for me. I completely forgot about it. So you want to make sure that you are monitoring it and just making sure once it starts to go through smoothly and once it actually catches onto the roll, you're good to go. You can walk away and let it print out because once it's on the roller pad or the roller feed, it's already tight enough to maintain that flatness on the printer. So you won't have to worry about that, but you will sometimes have to adjust your oven and your shaker just to make sure that it is going through correctly. So I would recommend watching it. And what I like about this printer, you can pause it to do various things that you may need to do, um, but you can pause it and stop it and then begin printing again once you've attached the film to the roller. So for me, that's a bonus and I really love having that capability. But as you see, now it's going through the roller. There is a sensor inside of the shaker that communicates with the roller and everything begins to just start flowing and feeding through. Of course, that's sped up a little bit, but as you guys see, this is pretty much how it would go. The powder is being on there or shaken onto there and then it's going through the oven and then we have a cured DTF print. All right y'all, so we're all done with unclogging our machine, getting those inks back flowing and printing out our transfers. So if you are interested in any of the Pro Color products, I will have a link listed below to their site so that you can go ahead and do some research compare pricing. The only thing that I can say with Pro Color that of course I'm still not a fan of and I thought by now that they would go ahead and fix this particular situation is that they don't have a dedicated US customer service line. So you're always going to be talking to them in the middle of the night or very late at night depending on which coast you're on. And that for me, I'm on the East Coast so that doesn't always work very well for me but I have been able to make things happen and to keep pressing through and produce beautiful prints with my machine. So that's the only thing that I want to warn you about. Um, their customer service is available and I do find that they're very helpful. If you feel comfortable with them doing it, they can take over your machine, your computer and kind of set things up for you or try to help sh troubleshoot some of your problems. However, that's only if you feel comfortable with them doing that you can go ahead and just take their directions and do it yourself. But that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give us a thumbs up. Also, make sure to head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join the Craftable Things communities there as well. I would love to have you and everybody else there would love to have you too. They're super nice and helpful. That's it, y'all. Thank you all so very much for watching. Until next time.